Okay, um, this week's Torah portion is Vayigash. We're picking up the story. We're in the middle of a very dramatic narrative. It's the unfolding of what happened to Joseph after his brothers sold him into slavery. They threw him into a pit and then they sold him to these passing traders, the, the Midianites, the Ishmaelites, whatever. They end up, he ends up in Egypt. And Joseph goes through going to jail, rising up to the heights of being second in command in the house of Potiphar. And we read, we read about him being able to interpret dreams. He interprets the dreams of Pharaoh and he gets elevated to second in command. He is now given the job of dispensing all the food, all the abundance that was collected through the seven years of plenty is now Joseph's job as second in command of Grand Vizier of Egypt to distribute this wealth. The brothers, his brothers who sold him, didn't know what happened to him. His father, who believes that he's dead, um, are in need of food, and the brothers come down for food. And last week there was a, a confluence with many different things that happened in the, the relationship between the brothers coming and asking this grand vizier, their brother, who they don't know is their brother, for food. And he puts them through a series of, um, of circumstances that culminates in this week's Torah portion, where his only, Joseph's only true brother, Benjamin, who is the child of his parents there, but they have the same parents of Rachel and Jacob, that um, Joseph has framed Benjamin. So Benjamin is now about to be thrown into jail. What's going to happen? And Judah, Yehuda, steps forward and he approaches the grand vizier, who is Joseph, but doesn't know it. And he approaches him and he tells him the whole story about how he cannot take this brother, Benjamin. He cannot take this son, Benjamin, because the elderly father will not survive the loss of a second son. And he recounts the story of what happened to the first son, the, jo the son, Joseph, that, that we don't know what happened to him, that he was, that he, that he is believed to be dead, etc., etc. And then what Judah does is he offers to put himself in the stead of Benjamin. He says, don't don't take this brother, put me, make me the slave instead. And at that point, what's, what we see Judah doing as representative of the brothers is coming to a full, complete repentance. There's complete repentance by Judah. He's presented with similar circumstances that what happened before when this beloved son of Rachel and Jacob, um, the jealousy, the so on, the so on, they throw him in a pit and they sell him. What's going to happen with this second child of Jacob and Rachel? And Judah steps forward and, and he exhibits in his changed behavior that he's not the same that he was back then, that now he's willing to put himself on the line. He's willing to minimize his ego and say, it's not about me anymore. It's not about what I think is right. I can't do this. I have, I have sympathy, empathy for my father, for, for what should be right. Don't take this child, Benjamin. Don't do this to our father. And he offers to put himself forward. So we see repentance. This is the first point I want to bring out, which is that the brothers, through this whole narrative, through the whole story of the ups and downs of what happened with them coming to Egypt to get food, they have exhibited that they are remorseful for what they did, that they are um, admit what they did, they confess what they did, and they don't want to do it again, as exhibited by being given a similar, very, very similar circumstances to repeat the behavior that they did back then. 20 something years ago and showing that they've changed. They're not the same and they repent and they, and they, and Judah says, take me instead. And at that point, Joseph steps forward and he clears the room of all his um, entourage, his, his whatever, his servants. He clears the room so as not to embarrass his brothers. And he reveals himself to his brothers. And he says, I am Joseph. I'm that child. Doesn't say this, but I'm the, the, the brother that you sold in slavery is my father still alive? And, there's a, and the brothers are shocked. He's revealed himself. So, so, so what's really amazing is we had the repentance of the brothers showing that they've changed, that there's change built into our system, into the fabric and the, of the universe is capacity for us to grow and for us to change. And when the brothers repent when they are remorseful, when they confess, when they're given the similar circumstances and act differently, when they do all of that and they've done complete teshuva, they're changed, they're different, they're not who they were 20 something years ago. And when Joseph reveals himself, 
he's also exposing himself. He's saying, I'm not who you think I am. I'm not this grand vizier. I'm your brother. I'm, I'm, I'm your brother. And, and I'll look after you. And so that bringing down of the barriers, bringing down of all these things that separate him from his brothers, saying, no, this is who I am. And he's exposing himself. He's becoming vulnerable. So I want to bring that down to our days where we put up perhaps masks of who we present to the world or what we want people to think about us, about us or what we think about ourselves. And it becomes so much that we actually don't even, we're not even in touch with ourselves. And what we can learn from Joseph and what we can learn from the brothers is that when we pull down those barriers, when we're able to be vulnerable and genuine and get to the core of who we are, then we can have closeness and vayigash, that's the name of the Torah portion, is this closeness that Judah, he comes close, he approaches, he approaches, comes close to Joseph. And Joseph reveals himself and comes close to his brothers. So there's a wholesomeness of the relationship that's being formed. There's a reconciliation between the brothers that's happening that we haven't seen in the Torah up until now. We've seen fratricide with Cain and Abel. We've seen, you know, a lot of a lot of deceit between Jacob and Esau. We've seen and they go but they're separate ways. We haven't seen this reconciliation until now where the brothers are coming together and saying, and then what Joseph does, and this is the first time, according to Rabbi Sachs, this is the first time we see this in the Torah, is that Joseph forgives them, the aspect of forgiveness. So we have repentance, we have change, and we have forgiveness. That he's saying, I don't harbor anger about you. I'm not going to begrudge you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to enact any kind of revenge against you. I'm not angry with you. So here's a forgiveness. Here's a forgiving them because they're different people. And he's also reframing or framing the situation in a way that allows him to give forgiveness. So what he says is, is that this was all the divine plan. The divine plan was for me to go down to Egypt, for me to be um, to go through the, 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 the dungeons, to go through this process. This whole process was an unfolding of events that had a divine plan, a divine hand, such that I would be in second command and I would be the distributor of food and I would be the conduit by which the Jewish people are going to come down to Egypt and unfold with the Passover story, etc. But this is the beginning of the Jewish people coming to Egypt and living in Egypt. And Joseph understood and chose to see and understood that his role had to be. He wanted to play that role. He chose to play that role. And he understood that everything that he went to these last 22 years was God's hand. And there was a purpose in it and there was meaning in it. And he's willing and able to go through all that suffering and challenge because there was meaning in it, because it was part of the divine plan. God was with him. God was, God was orchestrating it all. It all had to be. And Joseph says to his brothers, and I don't this was all divine plan. It was all meant to be. And I don't hold you responsible. I'm not angry with you. I'm forgiving you. And it's perfect. The situation is perfect because the brothers repent. <laughs> so they're different people. And, and, and Joseph forgives them and he frames the whole past. He's releasing the past into a positive future because to God's involved. This is all had to be this way. I'm not holding you responsible. I'm not, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be kind to you. I'm going to look after you, bring your father down. Let's have, let's, let's be all a family again. And that's how it all plays out. So these three aspects of reframing the past so that we can carry it with us into the future in a, in a positive way to, um, to forgive Joseph forgiving so that he's not, filled with anger and begrudgment, if that's a word, and the, the brothers going through this, these steps of um, repentance. And so everybody's changing. The, bo the brothers are changing. They're not the same people they were back then. And Joseph is changing. He's not the, the brother who um, is flaunting his um, special status with the father. He's not the one that's showing off his coat of many colors. He's not the one that's telling the dreams that show that he's going to rise above them. He's not doing that anymore. Now he's a man who's humble. He's a man with God. He's a man saying, this is all a divine plan. It's it's all God. It's all God. It's not me. It's God. And I'm just part, I'm just part of the story. And this is my part to 
place to distribute the wealth and to be here so that I can take care of you come down you my brothers you my father come down to Egypt and I will look after you and that's what we read about in this week's Torah portion so these three pieces that I wanted to pull out from the from the end of this particular piece of the story are um, uh, the capacity we have to change and to be different and to um, and to move into a better place repentance to Shuva to returning to who we really are which is good and to recognize the things that we do that are wrong and to undo them by then not doing them again next time um, that's the repentance we see in the brothers we see forgiveness that Joseph says I'm not angry with you it was all a divine plan I'm framing it in my mind that this is the way it had to be because God was involved so I'm not angry with you I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it out on you and I forgive you and I wonder if the brothers hadn't have repented um, would Joseph still have forgiven them and that's another whole aspect of forgiveness um, recently um, had the opportunity to interview Dr. Eager and she talked about a, a woman who survived Auschwitz and she talked about forgiveness was for her that she needed to forgive in order to not carry hatred and anger and resentment along with her into her future and so forgiveness was a gift that she gave herself and forgiveness was something that gave her spiritual freedom freedom from holding the Nazis responsible freedom from anger freedom from holding that inside that she gave herself the gift of freedom letting go letting go of that of those of those feelings towards the people that perpetrated crimes against you that she was able to do that and uh, but in this story we have this perfect confluence of repentance forgiveness and reframing and perhaps we can take that into our lives as we continue to go through this pandemic with different different hardships and different things going through our lives whether whether we can reframe it how do we see it what opportunities do we see for growth what is you know what is it that we're that we're um, mandated or kind of um, um, given the opportunity to learn from this um, what will we come out the other side are we forgiving are we working on ourselves to make ourselves into better people and uh, that's something that I that I took out from this week's Torah portion